Good morning, BC Calculus students. And it is another snow day. So we are going to go ahead with our um, lessons. We did area between two curves, and now we are going to do volume. So these are the homework pages that I will uh, check tomorrow. Um, 407, 7 through 14, all 21 and 22. I suggest that you try the following problems with your calculator and the others without. Um, the examples I'm going to do today uh, could be on a calculator or non-calculator part. Um, and the AP exam will have some years these are on calculator portions and some years they're not. So I just want to make sure that you practice um, always. So this volume is one of my favorite topics to teach because it involves potato chips, lifesavers, Play-Doh, and Bundt cakes. So I'm going to give you a warning right now that if anybody can bake a Bundt cake probably towards the end of this week or beginning of next week, um, we'll be ready. Maybe, yeah, probably the end of this week we'll be ready for Bundt cake. So if anyone wants to bake one and bring it in, I will show you how it will apply to the lesson. Today we are going to do the potato chip lesson. Um, and if we were in class, I already had, I had bought, as a matter of fact, I ran into Chris, Chris Parrish, if any of you know him, at uh, Walgreens on Friday, and I bought potato chips and lifesavers to share with my classes. So today, sadly, you're robbed of enjoying potato chips during this lesson. Tomorrow we'll do lifesavers, then we will move on to Bundt cakes, so it actually goes in this way, right? We'll go to Lifesavers, then to Bundt cakes, and then finally to Play-Doh before we are all done with volume. Uh, volume, I want you to think of for at least for these three. One, two, and three. These are all, these are all revolution volumes. They are called solids of revolution. Uh, the Play-Doh one is not a revolution volume, or the process that we create volume is not by revolution or revolving. So that's the one of these three that is not like the other. So we are going to take care of the solids of revolution first, the, play, the potato chip kind, the lifesaver kind, and the bundt cake kind. And again today, just potato chips. So what makes a potato chip volume a potato chip? Boring calculus books and calculus teachers will call these problems disk problems. So volumes by disk. If you want to ever uh, look, if you want to look this up, you won't find volume by potato chips. This is me. Um, so, how could we find the volume of a cone? Now, in geometry, you know how to find the volume of a cone, but only a certain kind of cone, right? A cone that has a circular base and that rises to a point. So what about this shape, y equals radical x, so notice the algebra 1 function. And remember some things that you know about function from function world, right? If you have the point x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1, what that is saying is when you plug in x, how you, the y coordinate is measured is a height from the x-axis to the function, correct? So, check this out. If I actually create a series of disks and add up all of their disks, I will get volume. True? Well, that's kind of a deep concept, so let me show you what I mean. So if I give you this function, this is in 2D, right? You see it. I want you to draw its image. So here is the image from 0 to 4. And I want you to draw its image across an axis of revolution. And the axis of revolution for this problem is going to be the x-axis. So I want you to draw the image of this function from 0 to 4, and I'm terrible at drawing, ah, around the axis of revolution. I want you to notice some things. The little sliver, the representative strip that I've drawn here, goes from the axis of revolution up 
to the function. There is no space between, right, there is no space between my figure and every strip. And again, I remember I told you the click and drag generation. Can you imagine clicking this strip and dragging it all the way down to zero and back all the way to B, right, to four? If you click and drag, there is on all the time, the bottom of the function is on the axis of revolution and the top is always on root S, root X, right? No space. Solid. So, if now you take this disk, right, I'm drawing the disk right here, if you take that disk and spin it, so here's the top of it, spin, I create this disk, right? In space. So I create this disk, and that's what this better drawn, that's what this is right here. And again, imagine click and dragging this disk now, not just the representative strip, but the disk all the way down to zero, all the way up to four. If you could find all of those disks, the volume of all of those disks, and add them all up, you would get the volume of this cone. So. How do I find the volume of a disk? Well, volume is area, right? Volume is area times thickness. What is the area? Right? What is the area? Pi r squared. Circle. The circle was created from the revolve, right? You got the circle because revolution. You spun in this circular fashion around the x-axis. Spun. That created the circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. The only question is this radius. This radius. The radius of every disk, no matter what x you're at, right, goes from the x-axis up to the function. What is that function? x. So what is the radius? Well, the radius is y. How do I find out y? Square root of x. Yes? So, if the area is pi r squared, how do you move from area to volume? Well, that's pi r squared times thickness. And what is your thickness? Your thickness of every, of an infinite amount of dx, of infinite, oh, I just gave it away, the infinite amount of uh, disks, where every time you move this representative disk just a teeny tiny bit, well, that's a teeny tiny change in x. How do you sum up all of those? Leave them. Hey, you forgot pi, you forgot pi, the most important part of your circle, right? your pile, which of course you don't have to. What else am I missing now? What am I missing? My limits of integration. Where do you start getting disks? You started at zero. Where did you stop getting disks? Four. Okay. Had I been in class, I would have brought a potato and I would have illegally smuggled in a knife. And I would have taken the potato and I would have asked you about its volume and I would have put the put the potato down and then taken my knife and I would have cut it and tried to avoid cutting my fingers and when I, sh I would have sliced up that potato which is an irregular shape an irregular shape and I would have cut it up and I would have held up each little disc or potato chip right potato chip that's what I want you to think of each one of these discs as this is a potato chip And I want you to think of Pringles cans, right? If you want to think of a Pringles can, and when a Pringles can, you have a whole bunch of those really, really thin potato chips all lined up in that cylinder. So just imagine that your cylinder is not of a regular shape, but is irregular, and that all these potato chips are laying in there, 
from zero, the bottom of the can, all the way up to four. And you're just get you have all of these potato chips, and these potato chips came from slicing, right? These are all slices. Slices are from the top of the potato. Slice, 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 slice. Keep slicing all the way down. Notice another important thing, that your slices are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And your axis of revolution in this case was the x-axis. So when I was slicing, imagine me holding that potato down and slicing onto the desk, right? Be like the desk would be like my x-axis and I'd be slicing down perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So since you are slicing on to the x-axis, notice all the x things going on in my setup. Right? When I'm doing volume, I am slicing down on the x-axis, perpendicular to the x-axis, the axis of revolution. My function is in terms of x, and my limits of integration are x numbers. That's called foreshadowing. Now I'm going to erase all this and show you it in a neater fashion. So in this case, <coughs> the radius again was the y value of the function. The thickness was a small change in x, so that's dx. And again, that's how I got my... Ah, sorry. That's how I changed, that's how I got this into volume equals from A to B, pi, f of x, squared, dx. So let me show you another solid. So they call their slices slabs. You take, so this would be like my potato. Right? I superimposed an x-axis through the middle of it and sliced. So you take this figure and cut, 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 right? all the way from A to B. And I approximate each slab and say each slab is approximately is a cylinder and the base area is some function in terms of x and the height is a small change in x so that the volume of a each one of those little slabs right and that would be me holding up slices of the potato is the area times the thickness that gets volume sum of all of those cylinder areas times the thickness is a good approximation of the volume. And of course, as you make more and more and more potato chips, thinner and thinner, like the Pringles can, you get this. So you can see the notation going from Riemann, a Riemann sum, right? The limit, the maximum number of, right, as your delta x's go to zero, and you have area, times thicknesses and Leibniz made that a very nice integral symbol from A to B of your area function area times width is volume so back to our problem there you see the setup going from A to B pi, I usually take that pi and osmosis it out here, root x squared. Now this is a very easy function Oops. to integrate by hand. Done. Oops, sorry. 8 pi. You can check that out if you want to f and int this on your calculator. Right. Practice doing that sometimes, even if you can do these easily by hand. I put the function into y1.
put that into Y1 and then I do F and int. If you have the older version, you it would say the older software, Math 9 would come up with F and int. Parentheses, I would do Y1 squared with respect to X from 0 to 4. And then I would come up with not 8 pi because it would be 8 times 3.1415 blah 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 blah. All right, let's do another problem. So here is the same function. I've just changed the axis of revolution. Here's the axis of revolution this time. So I want you to find the volume generated by revolving the region bounded by the lines y equal 1 and x equals 4 about the line y equals 1. This is how I know what my axis of revolution is. So they want me to revolve. So that's spin, which tells me I'm going to be dealing with a pi thing, right? Because I'm going to have a circle bounded by. So this is how I'm going to create my shape. So you have to know that y equals 1 is a horizontal line and x equals 4 is a vertical line. So here's my function. I don't care about this part. The function there starting when I'm bounded by the line y equals 1, the function, the line vertical line x equals 4, and horizontal line y equals 1. So first draw the shape. Then draw your little representative strip that goes from the axis of revolution up to the function. Then draw the image across your axis of revolution, terribly as I do, and then spin. Go from the top of the function to the bottom of the image and back around. And there's my potato chip. click and drag this potato chip all the way back to 1 to 4 click 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 say to yourself the area of my potato chip is pi r squared but what is r? now remember my slices right my this is right perpendicular to the axis of revolution, which is also perpendicular to the x-axis. Since I'm perpendicular to the x-axis with my slices, since I'm starting at 1 and ending at 4, and those are x numbers, I know I need to write my radius in terms of x. But can you see that that is not correct? Right? My radius is right here. Here's my radius. Well, how do I get that radius? How do I get that radius? That radius, I know how tall square root of x is measured from the x-axis up to he up to the function, yes? I know that this is some x sub i comma root that x sub i yes but that not that's this is not the height my height is measured from one so how are you going to get the this piece this radius no matter where your no matter where your potato chip is how do you get this radius well you know this height is root x so you just have to take that radius and subtract what you need to get off this part. How tall is that? Well, that's 1. So, root x minus 1. That's my whole radius, not just the function. So, lesson learned. Every time I shift my axis of revolution off of the x-axis, right? this says to me my I need to shift this is a shifted axis of revolution. So say to yourself, 
I have to shift <coughs> my radius. Okay. Now I can move on once the, now at this part I start to roll, right? How do I move from area to volume? Volume is pi r squared times the thicknesses. I double check. I'm perpendicular. My slices go down to the x to the axis of revolution, which is perpendicular to the x-axis. So that's why, since my knife ends up on the x-axis, then my radius has to be in terms of x, and it is. And my limits of integration have to be x numbers. So let me fill those in. So root x minus one and one to four. Okay, and here's just a prettier picture than mine. I'm going to erase my writing and show you all the math a little nicer and prettier than mine. So again, focusing on the R, I need to make sure that since my axis of revolution was shifted up off of the x-axis that I needed to shift my radius as well. Everything in terms of x, limits of integration, radius, and thickness. And I just math 9 this and wrote at least three places past the decimal. So, I've been a little, like I said, I kept talking about my slices being perpendicular to the x-axis. Well, what if I spin, right? So I'm going, here's rotating. That's revolution. Revolution is the spin. When you spin, you get circles. So therefore, you're going to have pi r squared. But this time, I'm spinning around the y-axis. So here's what's nice. The region between the curve, look, they gave me a function that was already in terms of y, and they gave me boundaries that were already in terms of y. Sometimes they're going to give you a problem where you have to manipulate that. They give you a function, y equals x stuff, and if you're going to spin around the y-axis, you've got to solve that function and get x by itself, and then transform the limits of integration into y-coordinates instead of x-coordinates of um, your boundaries. So here's what this looks like. So let, I'm pretending that I don't know anything about this, right? I could easily solve this and figure, you know, I could, if I wanted to make this a function and kind of see what it looks like, I could, but what if I didn't? So I'm stuck with what to do. Look what I did. I always default back to making a chart. Plug in a y, get an x. So I plugged in 1, the first limit, you know, the lower limit, I plugged in 2, 3, 4, I got a couple of values, and I plotted the points. So notice, I am the region between this curve, there's the curve, curve, check, between y equals 1, y equals 4, and the y-axis. is spun around the y-axis. So this time, here's my y-axis. This is my axis of revolution. Notice there is no space between the figure and the axis of revolution. tomorrow. Um, so draw the image. Always draw your representative disk to the real figure. 
right to the real figure, not the image. So I'm going to draw a disk from the axis of revolution out to the function. So notice that my little radius, right, is perpendicular to the y-axis. Still perpendicular to the axis of revolution, but my axis of revolution is the y-axis. So you're slicing, you're, right, if you click and drag this, you're slice, 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 slice. You're slicing towards the y-axis, not the x-axis. So when I to the on the quote unquote top of my radius, spin. Right? Spin. Spin. Right? Potato chips. But my potato my potato chips are this time lying on top of one another vertically, not horizontally. So how do I find the area of each one of these potato chips? How do I find the area? area doesn't change. It's still pi r squared. But what is the length of this radius? Well, at 1, its length is 1. And at 2, its length is 0.7. And at 3, its length is 0.5. And at 4, its length is a half. How did I get those values? How did I go from a y value to a radius value? Now, how do once I get there, how do I go to volume? Sum them all up, right? Osmosis to pi. Okay, what's wrong with that? You can't integrate with a y here and dx here. So what do you have to do? Duh, that has to be a y. Okay. That's fine. But what else has to be a Y number? Yes. The limits of integration have to be Y numbers. Which again in this problem is not that big of a deal because they gave them to you as Y numbers. But if they don't, you can figure that out. Right? You can, if you have any function, whether it's in terms of x or y, you can get the other coordinate. Yes? All right, now I'm going to take this off. Again, all my writing and take you through the, the nicer, cleaner looking version. Look how pretty their image is as opposed to mine, right? So this time, a horizontal disk. The thickness of each one of these disks is dy. The radius is the x value of the function, 1 over root y. So the volume is 1 to 4 of pi radius squared dy. Now, when I put this into my calculator, yes, I still write, you, ha you can't type y, you have to type x. But you still, you use y values 1 and 4 here, and you will get the appropriate answer. Now, of course, this I can integrate myself. Okay. Those would be multiple choice looking answers. So I would take your calculator and check, and I would type this in on your home screen and get the decimal approximation, and then math 9 this expression with the x stuff in it and see if you get the same thing. Just my suggestion. Alright, here's one that would definitely be a calculator problem. Here's an application of a, a cooling tower. I don't know if you've ever been my family, my um, you know like my, gran my grandmother's family and all that is from coal country in Ohio across the Ohio River from Pittsburgh and I see these and every time I used to visit my grandmother I would go past these kinds of cooling towers. Um, 
So if I wanted to find the volume of such a thing, I can superimpose an axis on it and look at that shape. It's 500 feet high and the shape can be approximated by this graph. And I can take this graph, right? This is just function fitting, right? You can just, you can take these measurements and create and find this function using regression models and then you spin this, right? I can just, I can take these, right? And right, that's how I can find, do this and potato chip this thing. Notice that between the shape and the axis of revolution, there is no space. Notice that the radius goes from the axis of revolution to the function. The axis of revolution is just the y-axis, so I don't have to shift. So my function already was x is equal to y stuff. They gave that to me. So how do I do this volume? Here's the radius. This is just pi r squared. dy says you are slicing perpendicular to the y-axis. So these things are y, a y function, which means this is your limits of integration are y numbers. Is that true? zero and five hundred and your pi for your constant of integration they call this. Okay? Now I'm gonna go back a slide here. Oh did this I think I come up All right. This one when you do this this problem said to round um you just notice I gave you units so you end with units volume is always cubic, yes? I just want to go back one slide to say that I can also do a shift, right? What if I had said to do this problem, what if I'd given you the same shape, but I said that you're, instead of revolving around the y-axis, you revolved around the line um, x equals a quarter, right? If I said that, that means that your axis has been shifted off of an axis, and since all functions, right, all of these, all functions, whether you're in terms of x or y, measure from the appropriate axis. So y is equal to x squared measures from the x-axis up to a height of whatever x you have squared. Um, 1 over root y measures from the y-axis out. Yes? So if, my, if I'm going to 1 fourth, my axis of revolution has been shifted off of the y-axis. Right? Axis of revolution has been shifted. Therefore, that means you need to do what? You must shift your radius appropriately. And this is where your drawing really helps, at least in my opinion. So notice there is still no space, right? There's still no space between my figure is here, right? And it is, right? My figure is right up against my axis of revolution. But when I draw my little representative strip, my representative strip goes from my axis of revolution out here. And I'm still going to spin. I know that's a terrible drawing. I know, I know. No judging. And how I start again with area. How do I get the area this of this potato chip? It's still pi r squared. But how do I get my radius? I know my radius in, is involved with the function that I was given. So I know it is 1 over root y, right? Because, But remember, 
that 1 over root y is measured from the y-axis all the way up. Yes? So is my radius too big or too small? Right? My radius, or I'm sorry, is this, is this red, this is too big, yes? 1 over root y is too big. How much too big? You need to take off a 4. Once I'm here, the rest of it rolls. I know how to go from area to volume, right? I have my pi. I'm going to put that outside. Put my function, 1 over root y minus 1 fourth squared d who? And d y. And I'm going not from 0 anymore. Where are you starting to make potato chips? You're starting, right? I'm going up to 4. But where did I... Oh, no, I still started at 1, didn't I? Sorry. Right. Still started at 1 and going to 4. Okay? Cool? Cool. Um, all right. I, if you go to math groups, I put up a handout, <coughs> excuse me, with these three problems from the PowerPoint. So if you want to practice with a clean sheet, you know, if you want to go through this through these problems again, I mean, you don't have to. So there's number two. So well, let me go all the way back. So I have a handout that has this says number one. And this is number two. And... This is number three. And I think, um, here, if I, I think I have it here on my computer. Yes, here it is. So this is what it looks like. So the things that I want to make sure that you remember about potato chips, right? Because that's not a big deal right now because we've only done potato chips. What makes, these are solids of revolution, but these ones are potato chip problems. Or again, your book boringly calls them disk problems. So, I've given you disk problems, and what is common about each one of these is that the axis of revolution and the figure there's no space. No space between axis of revolution and your, the figure that you're evolving. Okay? Even when I change this, the axis of revolution to 1, this is y equals 1, even in this problem, Notice that. No space. Here. Axis of revolution. And figure. No space. No space tween. Figure. Axis of revolution. Even when the axis of revolution has been shifted off of the axis. Figure. That's how I know I have a potato chip problem or a disk problem. The other thing to remember, not about whether you have potato chips, this is going to be true um, regardless of whether we have a potato chip problem or not, but when you are slicing, when you are revolving around um, an x, the axis of revolution is an x value or an x issue. Right? 
you're slicing perpendicular to x-axis that means dx slicing right slicing perpendicular to x-axis. Now even though my axis of revolution isn't the x-axis, I'm still slicing perpendicular to the x-axis. X-axis, that means my setup is going to be dx, which means function in terms of x, limits in terms of x. But here for this problem, I slice perpendicular to y-axis. That means volume is going to be involved in integrating dy, which means function is in terms of y, limits are in terms of y. Okay. So what makes a potato chip? It's whether I have a space between my axis. Whether my axis is horizontal or vertical matters not. If there's a space, I don't have a potato chip. That's tomorrow. If I have no space, potato chip. When my a if my axis is horizontal, whether it's on the x-axis or up or down, I have to shift my radius as well, right, this, let me do this one in a different color, too, right, for this one, my axis of revolution was shifted, so I need to shift my radius. no radius shift, there's no shift here, right, your axis, no shift of axes of revolution, it's on the y-axis, so no shift of your radius. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope I'm not confusing you. Same thing here, there was no shift of my axis of revolution. It's on an axis, it's on the x-axis, therefore no shift of radius is necessary. Right? Okay. Well, have fun with that. Hope all goes well with your homework. And I will see you tomorrow.